New York, UK, California, Portland, New Mexico, New Jersey. I think that was Portland, Maine. <laughs> Vancouver, Ohio, North Carolina, New York. Ooh, they're coming fast. Another Canada. Three more Canadas. <laughs> England, Portugal, Sweden, California, Canada, New York. Oh, I love it. You guys are from... We pretty much have the whole world covered here. Right, and we'll let a few more in. And as we're letting more people in, um, I would love to hear, I know you all come from the Alchemy of Ascension season five. And um, I see Caroline, hi Caroline. She was one of our speakers. Um, love it when we get the speakers on too. But I would love to hear what was something that you loved or your what may be your favorite part of the Alchemy of Ascension season five. And what would you like to see more of or see maybe that we didn't have in the future? If you can give me like whatever you want to tell me, I'm open to hear and I won't be able to read it all right now, but I'm going to go back and read the comments. And I love to hear, you know, it's it's an event that's put on for you, um, not, you know, it's not for me, it's for all of you. So I want to give you more of what you do want. And um, when I when I get your feedback, it's really helpful. And on that note, I also want to say thank you to everyone who did fill out the, the feedback forms. I sent out a... a okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute. Make sure you stay muted unless, um, unless I call on you for, uh, I'm going to take question and answer. But um, until then, we just want to make a clean recording. So stay muted. But um, I love, you know, I love to hear uh, your feedback. And so I sent out a survey just asking some questions. Thank you for all of you who returned those. I haven't read them yet because I have hundreds <laughs> to go through. So I'm going to take some time next week and start to sort through all of those. And so if you haven't, re if you hadn't heard a response from me, don't worry. It doesn't mean I didn't receive it. I received them, but I'm just not going to be able to um, read them all right away since there's so much email. And um, I, I love that you all gave me your feedback. So thank you so much for that. All right. I see tons of comments coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then let in one more, and then we're going to just jump into it here. All right, a couple more. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm actually I'm gonna I'm gonna pin my video so everyone can see. And then I am also going to I'm gonna make sure that there's plenty of time for question and answer. Um, I, I want this to be for you, so I want to give you what you want. And in order to do that, I'm gonna I'm gonna open it up in a little bit so that you can ask me questions. I can um, I can do channeling. I can kind of what I do, the way that I operate. When someone asks me a question, I'm very clairvoyant, so I generally see the answer. I see a line of energy connected from your question to the answer, basically. And so um, I read that line of energy, and I also oftentimes will sort of speak what I'm seeing. And um, so if you want to ask questions, I would just ask that ask questions that number one were being recorded so you don't want to make it too personal and it, it's it's more about the collective than about the individual on on a group call like this so make sure that whatever you ask it's relevant to the whole or the collective in some way it can be about ascension it can be about um, galactic shamanism it can be about any of the topics that were covered on the alchemy of ascension um, but just try not to make it like you know is my cat going to be okay next week and you know like not so personal to, that it has relevance for for the, the whole rather than just yourself okay and um i am going to jump in i know there are a lot of people still trying to get in late um but i don't want to focus on that i don't on the waiting room. Um, okay, so this is all about 
us as the new humans. We are the new humans. We are humanity ascending. And um, I didn't plan this. I love that in, in the email that I sent out yesterday, it said, tomorrow we are ascending. And then today we are ascending. And you know what? It's true. It's it, it, it's every day we are ascending. And particularly in embodied ascension, we are always just incrementally turning up that dial of ascension, turning up our, um, our frequency and tuning up so that we are able to incrementally reach higher and higher levels of light. And it's so important for us all to be doing that right now. Number one, because there are such intense energies coming onto the planet. And what's happening is some people are having spontaneous awakenings. Some people are like actually really getting, um, I, I would say kind of like, it's almost like getting plugged into a light socket, getting your circuits blown. And if you're not prepared for that, if you're not prepared for the level of energy that's coming on in to the planet and in to your body, it can really set you back. Uh, like getting, you know, it can, it can cause people to kind of have a, a setback effect where maybe you feel fatigued, maybe you feel confused, maybe you feel, you know, you've all heard of probably ascension symptoms. So in, um, in what, what we practice in embodied ascension, and that's really what I'm all about, is bringing frequencies of light into the body and amplifying the light in the body that you're able to hold, amplifying your ability to hold more and more light so that we can handle these amplified energies that are coming onto the planet, so that we can assimilate them anchor them, ground them into our embodiment, ground and anchor into the earth and connect to the, the, gal the galactics, the, gal the galaxy and beyond the universe, the universal energy. But when we're just connecting galactically and we're not anchored in our light and we're not anchored in the earth, it's really easy to get blown out and to sort of get confused, to feel aloof, disembodied, ungrounded, uncomfortable in the body. So embodiment really requires a, a clearing of the density of the body. It doesn't feel good to be present and embodied in a body that is full of dense energy. And by dense energy, Basically, I mean, accumulation of energies that need to be cleared. And there's nothing bad or wrong about accumulating energies. It's, it's just part of how we operate. So it's never a judgment to say, oh, you're full of dense energy. It's more just about having tools and techniques to be able to clear yourself and make, make the body a, an enjoyable place to live, to be, to hold your light, and to be as the divine light beings that we are. These bodies are such an amazing technology and such a unique gift. So, you know, when I hear people say it's, it's like a, a punishment or a challenge to be human. Yes, it's a challenge, but it's not a punishment. It's really, really a gift to be here, especially now. And if any of you saw my Tuesday video, you know, I talk about that at the end about how so many beings, so many spirits would love, love, love to have a body right now. And um, a lot of walk-in experiences are happening now as well. People that are leaving their body are actually opening up to have, um, have galactics and, and high energy beings come in. On the other side, you know, for if we're harboring lower frequencies and we're not able to hold higher light frequencies, we're also vulnerable to um, sort of a parasitic energy attack. So we want to keep our frequencies high and eliminate the possibility of those lower density beings being attracted to us and wanting to kind of try and try and take over, which they've been known to do. But we have techniques for that. So that's not meant to scare you. It's just meant to be aware. This is why we clear. And I do clearing work every single day. Um, yesterday, I was on seven 
I had, I had seven VIP calls. And so anybody that bought a VIP pass, you get a, a 30 minute call with me. I had seven VIP calls in a row, pretty much back to back. And at the end of that, I was so exhausted that I had to go to bed. I, I couldn't do anything else. It was 6 p.m. And I, I slept from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Um, and I had to do some clearing work because what happens on these calls, I fall in love with every single person that I talk to and I start to, you know, I, I desire to serve them in the highest way, but I, I also, I'm very empathic. So I start to kind of take on some of the stuff that comes up and I get to remember to clear that and, um, and that's something that I, I remind myself every day is just to do my clearing work. You know, I did wake up feeling really good and refreshed. And, um, and I want you to know that because I've been doing this work for 30 years and it still happens to me, right? I still do my clearing work every day. So I don't want anyone to think, well, you know, once you've done a certain amount of work, you're not, you don't need to clear anymore. You really do, no matter how long you've been at it, whether you just started or whether you've been doing this for decades, you still get to do, it's like the, the proverb before enlightenment, chop the wood and carry the water. After enlightenment, chop the wood and carry the water. We get to keep doing that clearing work and releasing density and anchoring light so that we can be a clear channel every day. Um, so yeah, I see the chat going. I'm not going to be able to answer any of that right now, but I just want you to know, I will read all of it. So thank you for your answers and putting in there what you loved about the summit, what you want to see more of. You can keep writing that throughout and I will absolutely read that, um, when I, when we're done and do, do remember to stay muted so we get a clean recording. Um, okay. So Another thing I wanted to talk about um, in all of all of this conversation about ascension and being the new human, you know, really getting across that we are the new human, everybody here. And it's because we're choosing to be, it's because we're here right now. It's not because we're special or unique and, and not that we aren't, we are all special and unique in our own way, but we're not better than anybody. It's the choice that we've made in having our presence here at this time and choosing to be um, as much as possible of, of service and this is the topic that I really want to want to start to touch into with all of you. The, the way that you know that you're ascending, that you're opening, that you're activating is that you will sort of sometimes incrementally and sometimes in, you know, a kind of a huge way all at once. It doesn't really matter if, whether it's a little bit at a time or, what, or, you know, really big, but you will become more and more interested in being of service to other in a balanced way. And what I mean by that is in a way that's not depleting you. Um, so when, when someone's serving out of a need to receive acknowledgement, a need to be seen, a need to be valued, that can actually cause imbalances. But when you're serving just from the space of desiring to serve, desiring to assist the collective, desiring to upgrade um, as a human collective, all of us, you know, and what can I do to assist in that, in this upgrade? What can I do to assist humanity? And what I do to assist humanity also is for the earth, is for the galactics, is for the whole universe. So while we're doing our personal work and we're grounding in and we're anchoring light, that part is absolutely not selfish. And I, you know, that's something we all get to do every day. And there's nothing selfish about that because that is service to all. And as you do that, the more you do that, the more your heart opens and the more you'll desire to, to be of service, to assist, to in whatever unique way that is for you. And what happens is as we expand our light and expand our ability to hold light, we have a, a torus field around our body. The torus field is like um, a channel, a channel of energy. So it starts at the base of the spine, comes up the spine, goes out the top of the head and comes back around in this field that's constantly being generated around our bodies. And when we 
ascend our frequency to a certain state, activating our light body, activating our heart center, activating really all of our chakras, we start to become what's called presence healers. So we're actually, our presence alone can be the thing that upgrades the, the people, the places, the spaces that we are around and that we go into. So simply by holding a certain frequency and you know, having done your clearing work and, and anchoring and embodying light, you become an active presence healer. And to me, this is really, it's, it's a beautiful goal, and it's really the service of the new human. The service of the new human of the golden age is to be a presence healer. So to hold and activate that light, and you're not even necessarily consciously doing this. You can consciously do it, but you do not have to be consciously doing it. But it becomes your presence itself is healing to others, is uplifting to others, is uplifting to the spaces that you go into is uplifting to the the plants and the animals and you know the earth herself so um to all of you thank you for becoming presence healers as i know that we all are if you're here if you're attracted to the alchemy of ascension and all of the speakers and things that we do here then i know that that is part of your heart's calling as star seeds, which so many of us, if not all of us here are, and, um, and light workers and empaths, I really feel like the call to action is to activate your heart. And if, again, if you saw my Tuesday video, it was really all about activating the heart center and what happens. That shift that happens when your heart awakens is that you want to be of service, that you care about other people, that you care about the planet, about the animals, the, the wildlife, the, the earth, the galaxy, you want to serve in your own unique way. And so again, I thank you for caring. I thank you for being a part of this work. And I do feel like this is why we have gathered here. This is why we are here now. And so what I wanna do next um, is just to really do some, uh, kind of a meditation with some activation and I am statements. And then we're going to move into question and answer. And so if you have questions coming up now, if you have questions that come up throughout this, this next 10 minutes or so as we do this activation um, meditation, then go ahead and write them down and you can ask me afterward. Um, but for now, um, let's get really comfortable wherever you are, feet um, flat on the ground if you're in a place where you can do that, or sitting is fine if you're sitting on the ground, or, or just as long as your, your hands and legs are not crossed, you're good. And um, if you have water nearby, it's always nice to take a drink of water before you begin and after we end. Water signals the body that it's safe. Um, we don't drink water when we're in fight or flight mode. Um, so we, the water that we drink signals the body and you can even program it to signal that everything's safe. It's time to settle in. It's time to go internal. It's time to just be and everything is safe. Okay. So I'll let you get situated, have a drink of water, and then we'll begin. All right, so if you're in a place where it's safe to close your eyes, not, not driving a car, but um, pretty much everywhere else where it's safe, go ahead and close your eyes and deepen your breath into the belly. And with every breath, bring that breath, that living life energy of the breath through the heart center informing your breath with greater quantities of heart energy so that each breath that you breathe is coming through that heart energy, moving into the belly, oxygenating the blood with heart-centered energy. And as you're breathing, 
Just relax into the body more and more. Feeling your body. Feeling your spirit, your divine presence in your body. And just noticing whatever it is that you feel. And now as you're breathing, bring your awareness back to your heart center, getting in touch with the light in your heart. Breathing into that heart light and feel that light glowing and growing out around your chest and out around your body. And now let that heart light expand out into a golden column of light around your physical body. This golden column of light is held in place by the ascension frequencies. And around this golden column are the ascended masters, the divine angelics, the ascension guides that are here to assist in anchoring this light, both in our physical bodies and on the planet. So just feel the presence of that golden column and the beautiful galactic energies, guidance energies, angelic energies, holding it in place. And in this golden column, it is safe. It is safe to be. It is safe to be the brightest light that you are, that you have ever been. It is safe to let your light shine abundantly and brilliantly, amplifying the light that you hold in your physical body. And in this amplification of light and in this beautiful golden column, feel the divine light of central sun from the heart center of central sun beaming source energy into this column of light, into the crown of your head and down your spinal column, lighting up every energy center along the spine, in front, in back, within the body and around the body, activating each center, bringing harmony and balance and a greater quantity of divine light source energy, amplifying the radiance of the body and simultaneously releasing density from the body, releasing any stuck blocked energies, allowing that to flow out naturally out through the golden column and received by the divine beings who transmute that density into light, pure light, and take a deep breath into your body. Again, anchoring that light of central sun down your spinal column, and this time continuing that line of energy all the way down into the core center of the earth, making contact with the heart energy of divine mother in the center of the earth, the earth herself and feel that heart energy at the core of the earth, anchoring your spirit, anchoring you into the earth, and then bring that energy up through the layers of the earth and up through roots carrying liquid crystal plasma, the creative energy of the divine, up through those roots into the bottoms of your feet and the base of your spine and moving that liquid crystal light energy all the way up the spine, again, activating each energy center along the way, all the way up to the crown of your head, 
and spreading into the bloodstream, into the cells, into the DNA, bringing a greater quantity of light into the DNA, the stargate portal of the DNA. And now bring those energies from above, from the central sun, from below the center of the earth, and from your heart center into a holy trinity of light at the center of your heart. You can see this as a golden triangle at the center of your heart, birthing the divine child, the divine masculine and divine feminine, birthing the divine child within your heart, activating new heart light energy and inspiring greater and greater quantities of light to be embodied in your physical body. Now take a deep breath into that triangular center, center of light in your heart and feel that spreading out into your emotional body, balancing the hormones of the body, balancing the glands of the body, balancing the organs and the systems. And now continuing out, balancing the light body and the light body receiving this light, activating even more and reflecting that light back in to the body, feeling more and more comfortable in the body more and more safe, more and more clarity, balance, health, and harmony. And with every breath, allowing this alignment to harmonize within and around you even more. I am the ascended human. I am divine light consciousness embodied in this physical being. My body is divine light technology. I am grateful for this body. I am the embodiment of Christ consciousness. I activate Christ consciousness within my being, activating my emotions, activating and harmonizing my physicality, activating and harmonizing my consciousness and elevating my consciousness to one with Christ consciousness and above. I am a child of divine oneness, of the radiant light of the divine. I am connected to all others. And I know that we are the ascending human collective. I choose this light for my highest good and the highest good of all. I choose to hold, anchor, and amplify this light, sharing it through my field of light and my Taurus field, and I anchor this light within the earth herself, allowing my presence to be one of healing and one of clarity, of focus, of purity, and of divine truth. With every breath, I allow myself 
to open to holding more light and clearing more density. I allow the galactic shaman of life to clear anything from my physicality that is not serving the highest good. And you can envision the galactic shaman as a beautiful, massive light being holding a feather wand made of angel feathers and the sage smoke is the smoke of all of the plant kingdom. And the smoke itself is clearing the density of our lineage as a human family. So breathe in this beautiful, clearing, cleansing smoke. And as you're breathing, send that out, send the smoke and the clearing out to your lineage, all of your past ancestral lineage being cleared, anchoring new light, being harmonized and balanced. And then take another breath, inhaling the smoke and sending that smoke to your forward lineage, all future lineage. And as we know, time is all happening now, causing an upgrade, a cleansing, a clearing, and a divine light activation for our entire lineage as humanity, backward and forward, clearing our ancestry and clearing our future lineage. And then take a few deep breaths to anchor this shift in consciousness, in physicality, activating a new pattern of light around your body, a pattern of wholeness, of oneness, of consciousness, of clarity, of service to whole. And now allowing that light to come into your heart center. Taking some deep breaths into the heart. And just feeling the waves of light moving through your body. Harmonizing, aligning and balancing for the highest good of yourself and for the highest good of all. And now bring your awareness back to the column of light around your body. And getting present here to gratitude for all of the divine light beings who have assisted in this upgrade, gratitude, to your own body and your own guides for their assistance in activating and upgrading the human collective and your own human body and your consciousness. Take some deep breaths again into the heart, getting present now, bringing your awareness back to the physical body and wiggling the toes bringing your consciousness up, your body becoming more and more awake. And as you're bringing your consciousness back, feel your connection to every other person on this call now and every other person who will be listening in the future. Feel your connection to the guides who are always present and ever present and available to us. And feel your connectedness to the ascension of humanity. 
And take some more deep breaths, bringing your awareness to your hips and your midsection, your shoulders, wiggling your shoulders, your neck, your head, becoming fully present, becoming clear and focused. And as you're coming back, just allow that all to settle in, feeling present, focused, aware. You can open your eyes when you're ready, really ready to just feel and receive that activation in whatever way is perfect for you now and going forward. Okay, so um, feel free to write what you experienced in the chat. And I'm also going to move into Q&A. And I just want to say I didn't prepare any of that ahead of time. That was all spontaneous um, and generated from your presence. So thank you all for, for your presence and for being here and contributing to that energy, for bringing this light onto the planet, for being the ascending humans and the ascension of humanity. For truly, that's what we are. And... Um, I've met some people who are in the waiting room, and I'm going to go ahead and start taking questions. If you have a question for me, the best way to do it is to raise your hand with the little, um, it says reactions, I think, at the bottom. Yeah, there's a hand raise, so I'll call on those people first, and then I'll also um, open it up to other people after that. So the first one I see is Destiny. Destiny, do you want, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Can you hear me? I can. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, holy smokes. I'm trying to figure out where to start with this question. Um, I had a major soul retrieval yesterday and I was really going on the fast track to moving forward because I felt like I was stuck for a while. Um, but I was on, on my way out of what I could consider the matrix there. And today all throughout the night, it was like there was something pulling me back, pulling me back, pulling me back. And then today I woke up and I literally, I'm not even sure if I'm, I don't feel like I'm fully in my body, but what I'm noticing is there's an aspect of me that keeps taking me back to the past and I'm looping in this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm just tired of doing this loop. I'm tired of busting my chops, getting forward, and then getting pulled back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, great. That's, that's a, actually a beautiful way to start. Um, so first of all, you're doing great work. You're opening, you're expanding. Um, you know how to ground. Yeah? A little bit? I was having issues. Uh, I'm I'm not going to, I'm working on it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So one thing that I'm feeling would be really helpful for you, maybe after this call is to go outside barefoot, feet on the ground, um, you know, anchor, really anchor into the center of the earth, anchor that light. What you're doing, Destinies, you are receiving these higher frequency um, ascend ascended you know, light codes, if you want to call it that, light frequencies for humanity and for, for yourself first. So you're one of the, the anchors of light, right? And anybody oh. can, can be this and do this. So, so first of all, don't be hard on yourself. This isn't about you stepping into another dimension of reality. This is about you anchoring this light onto the planet. That's a service that you're doing. So thank you for doing that. Um, it's not about getting somewhere else. It's really about bringing it in, anchoring it into the center of the planet, and letting yourself be the conduit for that. You're receiving frequencies. So you can go out. You can also sit or lie down on the ground. You can sit with your back up against a tree and let yourself just ground and absorb and and it's not even about absorbing for you right now it's about anchoring anchoring into the earth and then just letting the earth have these frequencies to send out in whatever way is right okay because you holding it is 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 hard it's it's a challenge so it's not about 
getting somewhere else. It's really about grounding, anchoring, allowing, just allowing it to be what it is. Um, don't worry about whatever from the past is coming up. That's fine. That's natural. Don't be hard on yourself. Let yourself really get the gift and the service of this work that you're doing and allow it to come through you. Okay. And, and, and don't worry about really about anything. It's all perfect. It's all in divine order. You're, you're a receiver. Okay. You're a conduit and let your consciousness relax. Yeah. Yeah. Just trust your body, trust yourself, let your consciousness relax, allow yourself to balance and harmonize the light within you and through you, letting it anchor, letting it move into the earth through your feet, through the base of your spine, letting the earth receive it. And then letting the, the galactics around you, the guides, hold that light, helping you receive it and anchor it. And at the same time, each time you do this, each time this happens for you, it's incrementally ascending your ability to hold light. And if you were here at the beginning, I talked about becoming a presence healer. This is you being a presence healer. Okay. Thank you, Ashayla. Mm, you're welcome. Thank you, Destiny. You're doing beautiful work. Um, be easy on yourself, okay? Okay, great. Um, next we have, let's see here. Mary Claire, you're next. Thank you so much, Washayla. And let me follow up on what you just did with Destiny. That was beautiful. It's along those lines. Uh, and, and your summit helped me move in this direction. I was going the other way. So thank you. So I have these surges that as of January 1st would come in really high frequency, really elevated, and I wouldn't be able to hold it. And, uh, and so then I would get a lower frequency later and then a lower one later. And they just seem like they're going in the other direction. So I'm not sure if it's because I've integrated them or if I'll have an opportunity to get them later once I do more clearing and that this was just an opportunity to know what's possible and what to reach for. It's kind of following up with what you said to Destiny. What happens if we can't hold something? Uh, like I spent much of yesterday in nature, as you suggest. And um, uh, so anyway, I guess that's enough of a question that for all of us to hear a response to. Thank you. Yeah, beautiful. These are, these are gorgeous questions and experiences that you're having. So again, yeah, you heard all of the, the anchoring it. Sometimes we have these experiences of expansion as, a, as an awareness expander. You know, to get to experience what's possible, to feel the possibility of, oh, wow, look at the expansion, expansion that's possible for me. And then, you know, bringing it into whatever capacity is perfect for you and sharing it with the earth. This is part of humanity ascending. And these codes, these light frequencies are coming. And some of us, um, clearly Destiny and Mary Claire, and I know many others probably on this, on this call, are receivers of the divine frequencies. So receiving them itself is a great service. And then to continue to anchor, to allow yourself to feel that. And I do want to say, you know, you feel like you were receiving less and less. It's, this is a really important point. Um, we are going to be challenged at this time. So being ascended humans does not mean that we're not going to be challenged. So be easy on yourself if your challenges are coming up, because those challenges actually are us. We're clearing karma, not just for ourselves, but for all of our lineage and not just for our lineage, but all of humanity. When you're operating at that level, this truly is service to humanity. So when you're challenged, when you're, you know, whether it's physically, emotionally, mentally, just know that 
it. It's okay to have these challenges. I'm clearing, I'm releasing, I'm activating, I'm letting go of lifetimes of density, right? Lifetimes and lifetimes of density. And sometimes it's scary. I know that sometimes it's scary and it feels like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can handle this. And so you get to just be okay with that. And when you're ready, move into trust, you know, and, and sometimes it's, it's okay to have a big experience and then dial it back and kind of start again, because it brings some stuff up. And this can be the shadow coming up to be cleared. And as you're clearing that and allowing yourself to, to let it go and call in the galactic shaman, um, if, if you remember from that meditation we just did, the galactic shaman is, I see the galactic shaman as the, the, the embodiment of light, um, the earth energy and, and star energy simultaneously, galactic and earth-centered. And if you, you know, you think of the shaman with the feather wand, but these feathers are gigantic angel feathers and they're, they're bringing the angelic energy in and the, the sage smoke is the all plant life, all of life essentially um, that, is, that is gifting itself in the earth energies and so using the elements using all of the elements here earth air fire water and ether to cleanse and clear out those old energies from yourself from your lineage from humanity and then you know letting that clearing move through you that density move out and again then anchoring yourself into the center of the earth and simultaneously connecting to um, the the center of central sun which is source energy and the light codes from central sun come in and bring higher light frequencies light codes if you can get out in the sunrise the as the sun is rising and the sun is setting soak some of that energy in through your eyes through your skin um, that's really going to help ground you. And if you can simultaneously be standing on the ground, on the grass or the bare earth with bare feet, that's really going to help ground and anchor and um, and just, you know, breathe and, and let this light flow through you. I want to say it's okay to get frightened. It's okay. It's okay to kind of just decide to take a step back. And then, you know, when you're ready, you can take a step forward again. Don't worry about it. Don't judge the timing. Let your trust yourself. Trust yourself in the process. Trust your body. Trust the energy around you. Trust the, the guidance. And, you know, call in your angelic support. Call in your ascension guides. Um, call in the earth herself. And let these, these beautiful light beings assist. There are like like countless guides here for the ascension call on them call on them let them activate you let them assist you let them help with this energy and thank you all for for channeling this light onto the planet and into humanity this is humanity ascending the earth is ascending i believe with or without humanity and so this is this is us assisting in that process of humanity ascending. Let's go with her, right? <laughs> okay, beautiful. Um, next, um, Sue. Oh, you're, you're muted, Sue. Go ahead and unmute yourself. No, come on. How many times a day do you have to say that? Sorry. <laughs> um, so I, I just have a quick question. I'm sorry it's noisy here. Um, about if you have any great advice as far as staying in my center, I, I'm typically there and it's just blissful. And then, and it's mostly with my children, my, that, that trigger me and pull me out. Do you have any great advice for, for being equanimous and just not letting the external take us away? I don't know. I, I don't know if I have great advice, but I'll do my best. <laughs> Perfect. Um, you know, no matter how much of this work we do, let's remember we are still human, right? And let's let's give ourselves grace 
in the process of being human. You know, when I when I was called to step out into visibility, now I did this work pretty much invisible for 25 years. It's only been the last five years that I've been visible. One of my deals with the divine is, okay, but I'm not ever, I don't want to be perceived as a guru or some sort of holy person that has all their act together because that's just not true. You know, it's, I don't want to even pretend to be somebody who doesn't have their own challenges, who doesn't have, you know, that, that would be um, inauthentic. And so I think the best thing you can do is be authentic to honor that stuff that comes up, to notice it. Um, something I do, if you want to get my book, it's called The Love You Crave, A Course in Ascension, Alchemy, and Connection to the Divine. And there are, um, there are like way, things that you can do that one of those things is celebrating when you notice yourself getting triggered. So like, hey, look at that. I just Truly. got triggered by my kids. <laughs> Good for me. Not good for me that I got triggered, but good for me that I noticed. Look at that, you know, and now like I've got some, some, maybe there's some program that you have running inside of you that's telling you that you have to be perfect with your children or that you're, you know, that something's wrong or that you're not supposed to get triggered or that, you know, any number of things. So first of all, let's go into non-judgment. Like raising kids is hard, you know, it's wonderful. So hard. Best thing you'll ever do. And it's challenging. So, okay, let's, let's be honest about that. You don't have to be perfect. You're in fact, if you try to be perfect, you're going to burn yourself out. So give that up. There's, there's no need for, you know, there's no such thing really. I don't think it's perfect parenting, but Truly, no, it's so true. Yeah. On the other side of that perfect parenting is being honest. You could say to your children, oh my gosh, you know what? I just got so angry. I'm feeling really upset right now. I'm feeling triggered. I think I need to go do something for myself to help myself feel better. You know, can you help me with that? <laughs> you know, or whatever it is, you invite them to, to join you in it, you know, give them permission to not have to be perfect. And that's going to, that you know, so then beautiful. everybody gets non-judgment. All right. I appreciate all of that. And is that your, do you have more than one book? That's my book. I have one book okay. right now. I'm working on okay. a second one, but that's it for now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you are. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. I, I honor you and all of this beautiful work and just your generosity. Mm, thank you so much, Sue. So I much. appreciate you. Thanks, love. Okay. Bye. Okay. okay. Next, we have Erica. Unmute first. You yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. I just found out I had to click on something to show the hand. Last time with Gary, I had was like this all evening. Oh. <laughs> um, my night work, I call it. Um, it. I wake up, maybe you have some tips for me. Um, I, I wake up and my body hurts very much. Um, I know... Archangel Michael told me that I don't have to look for the things I saw in the night and did. Only if it's very vivid, it's for my personal uh, human life. But um, it, working with my soul, I, I believe I, I am in high frequencies and they're not all compatible with being on earth. Because is there something I can do to make it easier for my dear body? Hmm. So you're, you're working at night, it sounds like, um, with also. That, <laughs> not, yes. not physically, but like in the other dimensions. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and so thank you for that. You know, thank you for the work that you're doing. Um, many of, you know, many of us do have places we go and work that we do at night, insisting and healing and helping and, and bringing the light frequencies and earths or, you know, the schools, the night schools and all of that. So thank you for doing that work. Um, let me just tune in for a minute as the, the physical, it sounds like you wake up feeling like you've had a, a workout. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. But also, um, there are also, most of the situations are so gruesome, what people can do to each other. And, and um, I, I know I'm just assisting. I'm, I'm not doing it on my own. Mm. And so 
love is needed, but I am so much love. So, so that part, I said yes to it, and it feels also rewarding. But I really have physical pain in when I wake up. Okay, so it sounds like maybe empathically you're taking on the pain of those that you're empathizing with. Um, it could be. Does that does that ring? What? How does that feel to you when I say that? Well, if I stand outside and look at myself, I think that is high, a, a big part of it. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. That was uh, a part of a mirror which I didn't see. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, and and I I can reflect that because I I, know. I, I have done that. I did that yesterday. <laughs> I do that myself, yeah. you know. So um, I, yeah, there are lots of things that you can do to um, to help with that. Uh, there's there's a really easy technique, the zip up technique. You know about that, where you just this is just visualizing yourself zipping up like a spacesuit. You know, you start, you physically do it. You start at your feet. You zip I do that up. every morning. Okay, good. I, I learned that from Donna Eden. I yes, did it's Donna Eden. So do it at night as well before you go to bed. Do it at night as well. And and then ask that a reflective shield be put around you. Put You can put yourself in the golden column, the golden column of light. And, mm -hmm. um, and then ask that you be buffered. You don't need the pain. I don't think the pain is serving you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, so you put yourself in that golden column um, before you go to sleep and you make the conscious choice. I choose to serve in the way that's for the highest good of all and feel good in my body. Mm -hmm. I choose to wake up feeling refreshed, vibrant, healthy, energetic, and feel physically good, you know, and, and work with that and ask your guidance to assist you with that. You're already working with Archangel Michael. Just know that there's some part of you that has that wants to help. And I get it's out of compassion, wants to help so much, and you don't want to see the suffering. You know, you don't want to, um, you don't want the world or other people to have to experience that. So you're somehow taking on a bit of that into your body. So this is your way of of allowing yourself to do this work without taking that into your body. I know. I have to see the pain because I'm there and I, I know uh, I'm not doing that. Um, so that's, that's not the part of it. But I already go to bed with a, the three lions from Sirius to protect me. Mm -hmm. But uh -huh. you said golden column. Yeah, and, and it's also, you know, the zip up. Yeah, making that choice. Not I mean, it's not that you're not seeing it. It's not that you're not contributing. It's that you're not taking it into your body and feeling the physical pain. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Let me know how it goes. Okay, I will. Okay, great. All right. Next is Winsy. Oh, hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, I have several questions, but two of them are really short. Um, so I have a question about, is there a Facebook group for this community? And um, my second question is, um, how do I know if I, how do I know if I'm a star seed? Is that something you address in the one-on-one -on -one call? And if that is, you can move on. If that's not, you can talk about it here. Uh, third question is, uh, what I got from one of her talks is there's a difference between twin flame and soulmate. Because I think some people mix them up. Mm -hmm. But what I got is there's a difference. Apparently there's one twin flame and 12 soulmates. Like, could you clarify on that? Absolutely. Okay. Yes, there's a Facebook group. It's um, Washela Sananda, my name, on Facebook. Uh, and there, there's actually an Ascension group that's that's by that's private. So if you request, it's public to see it, but private, you have to be admitted. So if you can ask to be admitted, then I'll let you in. I will be honest, I have not been contributing much there. Um, as I get more help, I will contribute more. And, uh, you know, and you all are free to interact with each other there. And I will, you know, I'm going to uh, 
probably in the next couple of months have a little more help so I can be in there more. <laughs> so that's, uh, there's only just one of me and I have to be a lot of places. So I get to be a lot of places, but yes, please feel free to join and interact there. And um, I'll be coming so I in. I just search your name. I just search your name, right? Yep. On Facebook. Yeah. There's, there's my personal page. That's not what I'm talking or my personal profile. You don't want that. Um, there's, I have a page that is Washe Sananda. Um, I think it's author, might be author page. And then from there, uh, the group that's attached to that. Um, I think it's also, I don't know, I'll have to look, but you'll find a private group attached to my page. So that's, I guess, obviously I don't have all the details, but you should be able to find it. It shouldn't be hidden. Mm -hmm. Um, second, your star seed question. How do you know if you're a star seed? Essentially, I think we're pretty much all star seeds. <laughs> We have galactic DNA. Our DNA is made up of at least 12 races. Um, and so while some people incarnate, they're, they're earth beings, they're all about the earth, they come back to the earth, they serve the earth, and that's wonderful. Many of us have come, and this is kind of the distinction, what, what a starseed is, someone that's been called from, um, like answered the call to come and help with the ascension process at this time. These are the star seeds, and star seeds are very attracted to the work, the alchemy of ascension, and the work that I do. So if you're attracted to this work, it's likely that you are one. But some of the ways you can know is um, if you have, like, a lot of it's feeling, a feeling that you are, a feeling that you've come from the stars, a feeling that you answered a call to be here, a feeling that you are on a mission here, that there's something that you came here to do, a feeling of, um, like, urgency, like, I know I'm here to do something and I need to do it soon. That, that's all attached to, like, what a star seed is likely to be feeling. And then from there, you know, and it, it honestly, it doesn't really matter if you are or if you aren't, if you're attracted to this work, you can do this work, regardless of where you, you feel that you're from. Okay. Uh, is, is there a way to know like past lifetime, like <laughs> if I have past lifetimes on other planets? Because <laughs> I know they're like past life regression, but that's for like past lives in other countries or, <laughs> but not like. Other yeah, comments. actually, I mean, I could do a personal reading for you. I don't want to do that. Um, that's not really what, <laughs> what I'm about. I would love to send you to Elisa Herrera, E-L-I-S-A-H-E-R-R-E-R-A. -E -R -R -E -R -A. She has a YouTube channel. She also has, oh, I'm not remembering her um, website, but you can find her through YouTube. She actually is a regression hypnotherapist, and she works essentially like with star seeds and she's a star seed activator. She works with a ninth dimensional Pleiadian council of light. And when someone comes to her wanting to know their star seed origins and, you know, activate some of their galactic memories, she and her council come in and, um, and really help with activating those memories. So you can look at her YouTube channel and see some of the if she interviewed me on there recently as well, I went for her to her for a session. It was really good. Um, so you can see some of what she's up to. And if that resonates, I, you can get a session with her. And I think she does, okay. she does virtual as well as in person. Okay. Um, okay. I got a really, really quick follow-up question to that. So are the other planets like real planets or just other dimensions? Uh, both. <laughs> there actually are, there are real planets um, that, that we can, you know, that, that we're aware of in the sky. But of course, there are, the, the planets are interdimensional as well. So, in, and by that, what I mean is like, for instance, Earth. Earth has a third dimensional aspect and a fifth dimensional aspect and probably other aspects. We as humans, we have this third dimensional aspect as well as a fifth dimensional, um, if you want to call it an incarnation or expression, um, a, a beingness in various dimensions. So the planets as well as the humans are all interdimensional, multidimensional beings. And then your twin flame question. I don't want to forget that. 
Um, twin flame versus soulmate. Okay, so in the physical, if we're talking about the physical aspect of a twin flame, the idea is there's one twin flame who may or may not be in body at the same time as you are, quite often not, but sometimes they are. And that you um, you come to, if you are in body at the same time, you oftentimes will meet and work out at, like at a really high level, but a really intense level, all of your past karmas and and like do a lot of spiritual work together to kind of blow through a lot of layers and clear. And a lot of times your twin flame is not in a body at the same time as you are. You can still work with your twin flame. And I have, again, in my book, The Love You Crave, I have a whole um, chapter on twin flame integration. And this is where um, the twin flame, not as a, a person, but as a frequency, you integrate the twin flame into your physical body, into your physical being, and operate from this new level of wholeness that you're holding a, a galactic. Um, version of your twin flame in your field. And this is you because it's the other half of your soul, essentially. So it's also a soul retrieval. Um, but I highly recommend integrating your twin flame and then you're operating from this level of wholeness. Um, I, I teach this also in my six month course in embodied ascension training, but you're, you're integrating the twin flame and then your relationships become much more pleasant because you're not looking to someone else to complete you. You're actually just enjoying the relationships, whether it's with partner, family members, clients, coworkers, whatever, whoever, but you're having um, your interactions become from wholeness. So you're not looking to get your needs met from your relationships, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, well, how about the soulmates? Because <laughs> I, soulmates I heard are, there are 12 soulmates. Yeah, yeah, you have. Uh, 12 soulmates, 144 soul family. They may, you know, it doesn't mean that they're all here at the same time. Again, like there are a lot of trainings out there on that. A lot of people do really good work around that. So you can research that. Um, when you meet your soulmates, they're people you'll get into relationships with. They're people that you'll oftentimes interact with, feel very drawn to. Same with soul family, working out karma again. And you can work out karma in a really powerful way. And you naturally are going to meet your soul family and your, and your soulmates. So I wouldn't get too worried about whether or not your partner is a soulmate or a twin flame. Um, you meet the partner that's right for you to meet and work, work out the stuff that you're meant to work out. Um, regardless of where they fall in that category. And if you're interested, like I said, there's lots of stuff online about that. It's not in your book. <laughs> that's not in my book. I don't, that's not really um, my, I, I mean, I do write about the twin flame, but it's about the twin flame um, integration uh, more so than meeting your twin flame. But there are people that that's their work. So I would, I would send you to them. <laughs> Dr. Harmony is one that I interviewed a couple summits ago. She's on YouTube. She talks about Twin Flame a lot and Twin Flame Ascension, which is really interesting. Look her up. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Lindsay. Great questions. All right. Um, Malin, you're next. Am I, oh, unmute yourself. Am I saying your name right? Uh, Hello. Hi. <laughs> this is Marlin. Marlin. Okay. Marlin. Yes. Uh, uh, I want to start to thank you for a wonderful program with your interviews. Uh, they have been wonderful to, to listen to. So thank you very much. Uh, and I have some questions about um, my life mission. Uh, I am, I'm working on uh, reconnecting with my higher self and, um, and uh, my uh, spiritual guides and I think that I have some connection but only once in a while sometimes I, I don't get any connection but sometimes I do I believe so and my question is uh, is it so <laughs> am I right uh, and how can I get a better connection with them uh, to be stable so I can reach them whenever I want to mm. uh, that's my great question yeah. Yeah. yeah and I feel like this is Oh, I'm going to mute you because we have um, background noise. I think I know. Hold on. I don't know if that's you. Okay. I muted someone else. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So actually it is you. Sorry. I'm going to mute you. 
Anybody who's unmuted to go ahead and mute yourself because we're, yeah, there we go. All right. So um, your guides are absolutely with you. When you first started speaking about them, I felt the whole back of my back and shoulders and neck like tingle and light up. And I also saw this golden energy. Um, so the answer is yes, they're absolutely with you. Yes, you've experienced them. If you're not experiencing them, what I'm feeling they're, they're trying to, to tell you here is that it's about integrating and trusting yourself. So to, to trust that you have access, you don't have to see them. You don't have to like have some outside proof that they're there or that they're working with you, but to integrate and know you have everything within you. You have that information. You have the knowledge. You have access. You can download information and that your, um, your, the reason for you kind of going back and forth or like having an experience and then coming back in, it's to integrate that and trust that it's within you. So it's important. A lot of times the guides will do this. It's important not to get um, attached to the outer experiences. I, it's fun. It's really fun to have outer experiences and there's nothing wrong with it. But sometimes people will get attached to like, oh, if I don't see them, if I don't feel them, if I don't, you know, then it's not happening. And the, the answer here is it is happening. You're having interactions. They are with you. They're working with you. Your higher self is working with you. So to be able to integrate that and go within and trust yourself to have the, the experiences that you're looking for, that information is there. And so it's for you to learn to, to trust, essentially, to trust more. Uh, yeah, sorry, I muted you. You're going to have to unmute again. <laughs> Can I ask you, what do you mean by integrate? I'm not from the United States. I'm from Sweden. So what do you mean by integrating? Is it just trust or is it, can you explain it in a... Yeah, so integrating... Integrating... I, okay, I, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. Integrating is bringing the experience in, in you, within, and allowing yourself to absorb it, receive it, anchor it, embody it, hold it, um, harmonize and balance it. This is all integration, the integration process. Sometimes people have a big experience and then they don't give themselves time to integrate it. I mean, I've had experiences that were really profound um, that have taken me a year and a half to integrate. So that means being patient, allowing myself to, to adjust or adapt to a new frequency, letting yourself you know, hold that new frequency at whatever level is perfect for you. And sometimes you'll get a big experience or an interaction and then, and then you kind of don't have it for a while, but maybe you'll have a little brush with it or a little feeling of it. That's where you're just incrementally, it's kind of like tuning up the dial and increasing your frequency a little at a time. That is a natural way for us as humans to expand our frequency or to um, ascend our frequency to upgrade. Is that helpful? Okay, good. Hopefully that makes more sense. <laughs> uh, I had some question. Um, I have a question. Are we all ready for the DNA activation or do you have to cleanse yourself more and, yeah, you know, um, traumas and um, old wounds? Uh, do we have to clean? Do we have? Do I have to cleanse? Does everyone have to cleanse, or are we all ready for the DNA activation? Okay, great question. Um, actually, I would say everyone is ready for DNA activation at their own level. So yes, absolutely, cleansing is good. Everybody is ready for some level of DNA activation. That level is going to be different for each person. And it also is connected to how open you are, how much work you've done, how much clearing you've done. Um, some people do get an activation like, like a big, like a boom, you know, like all at once. That can be really unbalancing. You know, that's not always, sometimes it's, it's great. They integrate it, they go on, but sometimes it actually causes a setback. So it's not like we're looking for a huge activation all at once, 
But um, when you do the DNA, like the meditations and the activations, you are, you can trust that you're receiving that activation at the level that's perfect for you at this time. And you won't get too much because that you don't want to get too much because that could actually set you back. So again, it goes back to trust and just know, yes, I'm receiving it and I'm receiving it in the way and at the level that's perfect for me at this time. Okay. All right, I'm going to move on. We have other people with their hands up. Jeremy Hill. Good to see you, Jeremy. Hi, Washela. Great to see you. Do you hear me okay? Good. I do. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So we're going to jump right into this question because I've been having um, some wild, vivid dreams lately. and I'm really into the dream stuff. So I was wondering just for the collective of how important the dreams are. And if you have any tips or tricks to clear distortions within your dream world, because I've been having a little bit of distorted dreams too. Um, so yeah, if you could expand on that, it'd be awesome. Mm, great. Yes. So a lot of people are dreamers um, and, and do a lot of work in their dream time. And, and that's not everyone. So I want, if anybody's listening, they're like, but I don't remember my dreams or I don't have vivid dreams or lucid dreams or whatever. That's okay. Not everyone is. And we all have our own way of doing this. Right. So if you are, I mean, dreams can be so powerful. Um, if you are doing dream work, which I know a lot of us are, you can actually be going to dream school and learning um, all kinds of things at night. I mean, it's endless what the possibilities are. You can get ascension training at night during your dreams. You don't have to remember all of it. Um, I would put in that when you go to sleep at night, if you want this, if you want to go to dream school, if you want to learn and you want to remember to, um, to ask, to make that request as you're going to sleep. A lot of people will like drink a half a glass of water and with the intention of, um, you know, putting your intentions into it. I choose to go to dream school and remember what I learned. And then we wake up in the morning, drink the other half and, and reaffirm that I remember what I learned. And also waking up and journaling immediately when you wake up will also open up that channel. Even if you don't remember right away, if you have that journal by your bed and a pen and you just start writing, kind of like dumping anything on the page that comes out, you might start to remember. And also for some people verbalizing what you experience, speaking out loud, I actually will pick up my phone sometimes and just hit record and start talking about what I just experienced. And then as I'm speaking more and more will, will unfold. So I, that's not exactly an answer to your question. That's how you can remember. I would say it's, it's for the people that are doing this work. It's super important. There are people doing grid work at night. There are people anchoring ascension energies. There are people doing healing work. There are people, you know, doing lucid dreaming and, and healing themselves, healing others, clearing karma, clearing the earth, you know, like all kinds of things happen at night. Yes, I think it's very important. If you're someone that's doing that and you know you're doing it, thank you. There are many people are doing it. They don't know they do it. You know, some people, like we heard about earlier, wake up feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm just, I did so much last night. Um, a lot of times, if you are doing things like that at night, you don't remember it exactly, but you wake up and you like, sometimes you'll have bruises or scratches or something on your body. You know, you've been doing something in your dream time and there'll be like some evidence, um, that, that has happened to me for years and years. Um, so, you know, there are a lot of ways this can manifest. I would say like, go for it. If you're having those dream experiences, like you are, Jeremy, I know you, you do a lot of work at night. And I think, you know, a lot of us also, I think you're probably teaching at night and not only learning, but, but sharing information, teaching, meeting people, upgrading, working with the galactics, working with the ETs, working with the ascended masters. I mean, this is all possible, not only um, in our waking life, in our meditations, also in our dream time wonderful that's that's great and then if you did have any like tips to clear distortions because i've been having like some um i guess galactic women like coming at me and uh taking advantage of me so i don't know if that's something i know it's uh it's very interesting and um i didn't know if you had any ways of like clearing distortions because i'm like literally like banding crystal quartz onto my third eye meditating and like trying to have clarity and this and that so i don't i don't know if uh, you have any tips from there too 
Uh, well, the first thing I would do is ask them what they want. Um, you know, like I notice you kind of went, and we do this in dreams, right? You kind of went into like, I'm being attacked, right? And, um, and sometimes those are our shadow parts or our fears coming toward us to reveal something. So in the realm of shadow work, and this is a, a big part of shamanism, when something like that shows up, uh, the, a really good practice to have, and, and assuming you, you're saying you're protected, you know, you want to have your protection around you, and, um, you know, knowing that you're protected, just lean into it. Oh, what is it that you want? Um, you know, what, what are you here to show me? What are you here to teach me? What can I learn from you? Um, dream, dream life is really interesting and can be kind of wonky, right? So you want to make sure that, um, that, that you do have that layer of protection around you, but also if you can go in with non-judgment and, you know, I've had all kinds of experiences where I've leaned into the experience, like when, you know, in, when I moved to Florida and I thought an alligator was going to eat me and one showed up to eat me in my meditation, I'm like, okay, let's see what happens. You know, and I had a major transformation after it ate me. So. So, um, you know, like transformation is possible when we go into like treat everything that shows up as something that's there to serve you. Like, how can I serve you? And, and there's a technique of projecting love. Um, I've, I've talked about this. I think you've probably heard about, heard me talk about this, Jeremy, but where you practice during your daytime hours, projecting love to anything that shows up. Because in, when you go into fight or flight or when you're scared, it's very difficult to project love from that space. But if you practiced it and you're used to projecting love, even when something's scaring you, then something that's actually not of love will clear itself, will leave, leave your space because love freaks it out. It doesn't like that vibration or something that, um, that is of love will beam that love back to you. And what you might find is those women that are trying to attack you in your dream time coming at you. Maybe if you project love and acceptance to them, they might transform into some beautiful princess or, you know, you never know, or part of yourself, your own rejected divine feminine. And not to say you're rejecting your divine feminine, but there might be an aspect of self that has done that. Right. Yeah, that definitely clears up a lot. Thank you so much, Washela. Shine in, shine on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jeremy. Okay, um, next. Who is it? Ifat? Is that how you say it? Yes, Ifat. Ifat. Hi, Hi Washela. How are you? Wonderful. How are you? Good. Thank you. I got uh, newly introduced to your podcast and uh, really enjoying them. So thank you very much. Um, I'm doing well, mm, by the grace of the divine and all my guides and etc. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm a clairsentient and I'm pretty pretty content with that. But I would love to have some clairvoyance. And I've um, worked with one or two people before and they advised me don't try to force it or don't yearn for it, don't pay for it, don't work on it. If it comes, it comes. Not, a, not everybody is supposed to have everything. And I understand all that, but I still want to be, still want to see because I'm a very visual person. I'm also very auditory. I love music. I sing, I dance. So visuals are very important for me. So if I'll just have a whiff of a fragrance, I'll be so happy and all that. And I know that if something's going on, somebody's there, I'll thank them and talk to them if I see something very beautiful all of a sudden or an animal staring at me wanting to have a conversation. I love it. But I, I just want a little bit more of a direct kind of dialogue with some kind of clairvoyance, um, either in shape or in form or in whatever it is, in color or you know what I mean, images. What do you suggest? Yeah, great question. So there, you know, a lot of people are kind of shut down clairvoyantly um, and you can, it, the, the, it's the third eye, right? The pineal gland, the third eye center where our minds, I, at least we believe that's where it's projected from. Clairvoyance is <clears throat> something, if you can visualize anything, if you can visualize a red balloon right now, then you have the ability, that's clairvoyance in a way, that's your mind's eye, your mind picturing something. So you can practice this. And there are a lot of great books on this. Um, 
Shakti Gawain wrote um, Creative Visualization, I think it's called, way back. That was the first book I read on it. Um, what's that? I've read, I've read that book of Shakti Great. Gawain, but I didn't put too much attention on the, on the practice because of that advice that somebody gave me that if it comes, it comes. But I still in my heart, I've worked a lot on my third eye. I still do. I mean, you have to work on your third eye every day. I meditate with my third eye. But uh, any tips from you? <laughs> yeah, practice visualizing. I mean, that's really where it comes from. And and practice um, instead of like you're you're talking, like your your speech creates as well as your vision. So the words that you're saying um, start to say, I'm I am becoming clear. Voyant. I'm becoming more and more clairvoyant every day. I see beautiful imagery, uh, you know, in my mind. The spirit gives me, divine spirit gives me beautiful gifts of sight and internal sight as well as external sight. And just start to be grateful for that. Start to focus on, oh, it's so beautiful to be able to see internally and externally. I love that I can visualize a tree when there's not a tree in front of me. I love that I can think of a family member and see that family member. And, you know, just start to, to practice gratitude and speaking the truth that you desire to have and feeling like, oh yeah, this is possible for me. I can visualize, you know, one thing so I can receive images from the divine. And then also you're probably receiving things that you're blocking or that you're not even aware are clairvoyance because for some, I mean, clairvoyance is just like a natural part of life. So when you're thinking about your grocery list and you're visualizing what the milk carton looks like or something like that, that's a form of clairvoyance. That's using our mind's eye and you can use that and expand on that. Just affirm it as if it's already there. I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, practice, okay. practice, practice. Just like, you know, anything, anything that we want to get good at, anything we want to learn, practice that and you'll get better at it. And trust yourself. And, you know, it, the more you practice, the more it will come. And it's not a yearning like, oh, I wish I had it and I don't have it. That's going to kind of push it away. But the way to be is like, I'm so happy that I have this gift. I'm excited to get to be better at it and practice it more, right? That's great. That's great. Thank you so much. I'll do that. It's just a positive affirmation as if I already have it. I got it. Absolutely. All right. You're welcome. welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Hold on one second. I had a couple of announcements I wanted to make, and I don't want to forget before I know we're getting, we're really getting into the, like an hour and a half here. Um, one thing is, I think I said this at the beginning, but I wanted to thank everyone for the surveys, for filling out the surveys. I will be reading those next week. Um, next week also, I don't have a date yet, but watch your email inbox. If you're still on my email list, I'm going to be sending out an invitation that we're going to be doing a collective prayer for the, the people of the Ukraine. And um, my daughter's best friend, her name's Kamila Hasanova. She's a wonderful. She's from Ukraine. Her family's there. And um, she has partnered with a, um, a, a charity to get money to the people of Ukraine and supplies. So I'm going to be send out, sending out an invitation. And if you want to contribute, um, you're welcome to, you don't have to, it's, it's, it's about the prayer. And then for people that do want to contribute, they're welcome to. Um, so watch your email inbox for that. That'll be of course a free event and, and you can donate if you feel like it. And then the third thing is I'm also going to be sending out some invitations to um, Embodied Ascension, my six month course in the next couple of weeks. So watch for those. If you're not interested, that's fine. You can delete them or ignore them. If you are interested, there will be ways that you can um, get involved and contact me. So, all right, next we have James. James, you've had your hand up for a while. Thank you for your patience. Sure, was Um, I'm actually doing a summit myself called The Art of Love in a, about a month and a half, two months. And I'm actually really curious to hear, what is your deepest pain point and in your path at the moment? And where do you see yourself going from this point on? Ooh, wow, good questions. This isn't supposed to be about me. Um, <laughs> my deepest pain point. Honestly, it's 
it's wanting to be capable of more than I'm physically able to do with the amount of time that I have. Um, that's, that's one. And the second one is I still am single after three years and I've been single for three years. That's a pain point. Not a, like, I'm not in pain or traumatized by it, but it's something I'm kind of like, hmm, when is love going to happen in my life? Uh, yeah, dating when we're energetic people is a whole different experience than um, maybe before we woke up. So I, I can deeply appreciate that. Um, who knows, maybe I'll see you at, at my event, but I think you're doing an amazing job here. I just kind of wanted to appreciate you for a minute and say thank you. Aww, thank you. And I love that you're doing a summit. It sounds like an amazing topic. Wonderful. It is, but really, uh, I think you've done an amazing job here. I really like the depth that you went with uh, in a breath. Uh, Lightstar was the one that I follow on YouTube yeah. that brought me in. So um Anybody who's bringing that light to the world has got my heart. Awesome. Yes, I love Lightstar. Everybody loves Lightstar. And she's definitely going to be on a future season. I just had an interaction with her right before this call, and she wants to participate again. So I'm sure I'm going to be having her on again. So she's wonderful. Yeah. Bless you. I hope I see you soon. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you, James. Okay. Um, I, it's Sarah S. or Sarah, Saras. How do you say it? Saras. 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 Yes. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Hi, Washella. I Hi. just wanted to say that uh, I came through Lightstar as well. And I loved your series and just uh, uh, took advantage. I did the session with Gary yesterday. I purchased the, the, uh, the globe and uh, the pendant. Wonderful. And I... Yeah, and I also purchased a session with uh, Dr. Celestine, uh -huh. and I did send a message because I didn't uh, get any response, and I was just wondering, uh, you know, whether everything went through okay, and what was, uh, you know. I'll send her your name. Um, all right, wonderful. I didn't have an email or anything to, to you, you know, write to her directly. She was just in Sedona for, um, she was a speaker at an event there. And I know she uh, just flew back last night, I believe. So okay. give her, get, be patient with her. She just did a lot. I'm sure she probably has a lot of people um, waiting for an email from her. But just to be sure, I'm happy to send her a message letting her know. Uh, I'll just send her your name. But I really think that's what it is because she, she's been traveling. Yeah, I was so impressed with her with her presentation, and I thought I had to have a session with her. So yeah, she's amazing. I'm sure you're gonna love it. Wonderful. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, we have repeats, but that's okay. Um, if thought, I <laughs> hopefully you got it right. That. Do you still have your hand up? Do you have another question, or is that left from last time? Uh, that. I, I did have a, a quick question, but I lowered it, then I raised it again, so I felt bad I didn't want to take other people's time. It's, it's about, um, uh, what's it called, the yogic sleep, like um, atomic dreaming kind of thing. Are you, uh, are you familiar with that? Nope, I'm not. It's, it's basically a time travel when you're dreaming. So uh, would you, do you have any suggestions for... Uh, I would love to learn more from my dreams. That's that's my main uh, main uh, objective here, because uh, as the other lady was saying, um, I wake up tired every day. I know it was a, a lot of work, and I learned I'd forgotten about the zipping part. So I'll start doing it again, zipping myself up. But at the same time, if I zip myself up, will I lose access to other dimensions, uh, which would might be beneficial to me is the question. I think the zip up is for, it's more energetic for personal protection and not absorbing, like empathically not absorbing energies that are not going to be for your highest good. And you can do it with that intention. So, you know, it's a lot, it's a lot of it's about intention. Um, if you, if you use the zip up thinking, oh, that's going to push away, you know, whatever experience I want to have, then it might have that effect. But again, use your intention, program it with your intention, with the intention that this is going to help me, um, feel better. And then again, ask for guidance 
and um, all of the things that I recommended earlier. I can't really advise on the, the type of dreaming that you mentioned because I'm not familiar with it, but uh, it sounds fascinating. And if somebody's teaching a course on it, I'm sure you could, you could, you could probably find someone. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank sound advice. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Malin, you have it. You have it again. Yes, hello again. Uh, I have a question about my life mission. It has come to me. Two things has come to me. Uh, one thing um, about healing and another thing about uh, starting a company um, with my musical skills and uh, teaching skills. Um, and I don't know um, which one is the best for me right now. I am quite confused in this and I don't get any answers from my, my guys. <laughs> So I'm immediately in the crossroad now. Um, so can you have you something? I can't hear you right now. Have you muted yourself? No, I'm not talking. <laughs> okay. So I'm quite confused in, um, in, in that. If you have something for me, which way I would go? Just is it healing or some other skills that I am I'm, I'm, uh, supposed to work on my abilities and uh, start this, uh, this company or uh, to be an entrepreneur or, um, or is it something with my musical skills, entrepreneuring? Okay, um, I am, I, uh, I'm gonna mute you. I'm gonna mute you. Okay, I am going to make this like, cause I don't really want it to be about personal questions as much as something that'll be good for the, the whole, the collective, but I can, I can answer this and also make it relevant to everyone. Um, go with your joy. When you're doing the thing that you love to do, that you would do whether or not you got paid for it, something that inspires you to get up in the morning, that you're excited about, that brings you joy, that brings other people joy, that is your guidance system. Um, I believe that we're all meant to be doing things that bring us joy, that we love to do. It sounds like your music brings you joy. You know, if that's where, that's where you have energy and where... Um, the, if that's the thing that inspires you and you can contribute to others with that, then follow that line of energy. And there are ways to make money doing anything, really anything, whether it's music or art or light language or drawing or oracle cards or, you know, like all the different people that we saw in the summit, they're all doing really unique things and making a living doing it, channeling and, you know, <clears throat> so many different things. So it's, that just shows that like, even if it's untraditional, there is a way to monetize your passion, to monetize the thing you love to do. Um, entrepreneurship takes a ton of tenacity and you're going to have things that you don't like to do in that. But the, the key ingredient is, I know for me, I work around the clock some days, but I get up in the morning loving what I get to do every day and knowing that it's of service to others. <clears throat> so these things are all so um, relevant to, you know, don't give your time away to something that doesn't fulfill you, you know? Do what makes your heart happy and follow that. Maybe it changes over time, but find a way to make money and love what you do. And if you're serving others with that, then even better. Okay. You're, you're muted, but. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. You're welcome. Um, okay. Sue, go ahead. Oh, sorry, you're muted. I, I, I don't know if you are muted, but I can't hear you. All right, I'm gonna let you, wait. No, still not, I still can't hear you. I don't know what's going on. Maybe you need to switch if you're on Bluetooth or something. Um, oh, I can, yep, I can hear you now. And now I can. Certainly, wait. Circle back around. I'll circle back around. Oh, okay. Okay, I do hear you now. If you want. 
Okay, we'll wait. Trisha, go ahead. Hello, hello, how are you? Great, how are you? Wonderful, it's so great to meet you and thank you for your service and your love and your energy, really appreciate it. Um, I have a question, I'm not quite sure if um, it's really relevant or who you can direct me to. Um, so basically I've been on this journey for about over 20 years and um, even before COVID, I um, was a hermit. And so what I was doing is just, you know, just releasing, detoxing, being centered. And so um, grew up in my family, but never felt like I knew these people. Like I, I was just dropped here, it felt like, you know what I mean, into this family. Never felt like a connection. I even have a twin brother. So it's like, we're just totally different. And so anyway, um, what I've been doing of late is just um, returning to zero. You know what I mean? And just um, meaning where I just want to be empty, where I allow just source to come in. And then I just, and I wake up at two, three, four in the morning. I just love that time. But it's just, I'm emptying myself out and then just sending out love wherever, whoever needs it, whatever, wherever they are to then, um, you know, embrace it and then um, use whatever love, whatever they need to transmute it into. And so do I need to know where I'm from? Because I've never felt connected to my family. You know, I'm okay with being single. I'm okay with this journey. I'm just dating myself in love with myself and you know what I mean? So I'm just like, is that important? Because I had a girlfriend who kind of introduced me to like, you know, to this path, like, okay, everything isn't what it is, you know, with traditional religion. And so um, she kind of freaked me out because she had had contact with like lizard beings or something. And I'm like, okay, I don't want to meet no aliens. I mean, I know they're <laughs> true. They're, you know, I have angelic help. I, I know, you know what I mean, that I have help. But I'm like, I don't need to know your name. I don't need to see your face. Come and help me. I'll let you flow through me as long as it's of love. And so do I have to know who I'm from? And I did listen to Dr. Celeste, uh, Celestine. Yeah. And so I'm like, should I go to her? I mean, do I need to know who I am and what my guide looks like and their name? I don't care what their name is or what they look like. Are you of love? Then you can flow through me. Then let, let's work. Yeah. So is it important? I mean, mm -mm. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's only, it's really only important if it's important to you. You know, yeah. like you, if you, if it doesn't matter to you, then absolutely it's not important. You know, if, if you want to know, there's so many people that are like, oh, I really want to know, you know, that's when it's important. But it does, if you don't need to know, then it's fine. And if there's something that you do need to know, I'm sure it'll make itself known to you. It'll come through. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. that's my thing. I'm just like, um, I don't want it to be, and I don't think it's out of fear. But um, she was, you know, a shaman and a guru and really connected and would do like different miracles. But she really freaked me out when she's like, the lizards came to me and they said they're coming from me. And then she, she left like they don't know where she went, but she went to another state. But I'm like, you know, I don't want it to be because of fear, but yet I want to know, well, why am I here? I, I know ultimately it's to... Um, you know, to be a, a love, you know what I mean? You know, we're antennas and we're just, yeah. you know, just to, to, to be vessels of love. I think, I, I think that is the purpose. That is the point, And there's nothing else to it. I mean, there's yeah. nothing more to do. Trisha, honestly, that's the <laughs> highest service of all is to be of love. And there's, there's really no greater service than, than to be love. And anchor that love and, you you know, the rest will work itself out. But no, you don't have to meet the lizard beings or anything okay. like that. You're good. <laughs> okay. And, and you're not, uh, do you sense any fear around it? Because, you know, because I know they're there. I know they're available, you know, other dimensions and beings and all that. But, I mean, in a way, I want to know where I came from. But and then the other hand, it's just like, what difference does it make? Just let the love flow, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I kind of feel like 
if, if it comes to a point where you're ready and you really crave that, then your, your person will show up. Maybe, maybe Dr. Celestine Starr is, is a great place to start for you because she's amazing and she really does have powerful insights and she's also very connected to the earth. Um, so if, if you're curious, if you're like, I don't need to know, but I'm curious, then I would absolutely recommend her. Um, however, if you're like, I'm good, I'm just, I'm just being love and I don't need to know. And that's where you're at, then be there and, and own it. <laughs> yeah. Cause during the session, she had mentioned that she'll take people there, but then they'll say, oh no, 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 I don't want to go. But yeah. I mean, I, I've been to the other dimensions. It's just like, I don't want to, that is kind of freaky experience where I actually experience myself out of body seeing my body as an avatar and that alone kind of freaked me out like okay well how do I now operate well you've been operating as an avatar so why are you tripping now you know what I mean and so mm -hmm. it's not like I don't think I would be afraid to walk through whatever level I just still need to experience the blue beings the grays the lizards you know what I mean yeah so I, I do know, know what you mean but you don't I always <laughs> email her first and say well, I mean, I don't think she would even know. I mean, what would, what the experience would be? No, me. when you when you open those <laughs> doors, you don't always know who's going to show up. So <laughs> you kind of have to be prepared for okay. if you're going to open the door, you don't always get to choose who's going to come through it. And exactly. you know, that's not to say that there aren't lizards that are <laughs> of luck, you know, or that want to help with the ascension. So we got to be careful yeah. not to be like not to enter or open the door with a preconceived idea of a lizard's bad and a, you know, an angel's good. You know, it's yeah. not always the case. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think we're aliens anyway, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I think I'll just probably continue as I am because, you know, I, I'm, I'm loving where I am. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just not really fully connected that I really have someone else that I can speak with or, you know, converse this kind of information. It was just like, it's just me and my pup pup and that's it. <laughs> you know um, what I mean? You know what I mean? It's okay. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, I talked I mean, to her, but. <laughs> yeah. When you're ready or if, when or if, you know, if you feel like searching, you, you've got a whole bunch of people that you can reach out yes. to. If you just watch the Alchemy of Ascension, you know, and, and they're yes. all there and it's, there's infinite possibilities, but if you're good, then yeah. Great. Continue on. Well, yeah. thank you. I appreciate You're that. welcome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. PB like peanut butter. <laughs> Got your hand up. That might be me. Paula Bowden. Hi. Okay. Hi. Hi. So um, I am a psychic and medium and a life coach, certified life coach. And I've been doing this work for 20 years. I just love what you're doing. I'm not making a living out of it. I have my clients and I have a five-star Yelp review and all this stuff. How do you um, how do you advertise in a way that makes it uh, possible for you to do this on a regular basis? And again, thanks for being around. Um, yeah, that's a great question. And I will answer it with a question. How did you find me? <laughs> You know, I honestly don't even know. Okay. Um, this email, I saw the Zoom link, but I don't remember. Uh, maybe it was through Michael um, Siron, perhaps. He might have sent out a link to it. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I do, when I do summits, I mean, if you think about, okay, so I do summits, they go to podcast, I have a YouTube channel. I have a website. I do a lot of stuff, but the summits are really the way that I collaborate with all of these people. They all share with their lists and then the people that are meant to find me, find me. And um, so, I, and you know, it's, it's a huge effort to put on a summit. So I'm not saying it's for everyone, but, but that for me has been the way uh, I get to do everything that I love. I get to collaborate. I get to connect, you know, with these amazing people. I get to interview. I mean, I'm infinitely curious. So I get to ask all these amazing people, all kinds of questions, things that I want to know. Um, I, I, they, they advertise the summit and, or not advertise, but share it. 
And then people show up from that. I, you know, and then they go to podcast. I, then it's a great collaboration. So I think the thing that I'm really getting to here is if you can find a collaborative way to share your work, then that, in my opinion, is the best way to go. Maybe it's not summits. That's a huge undertaking, but it could be um, speaking on other people's Facebook pages, like a lot of memberships. A lot of people have memberships, YouTube channels. People are looking for content. You know, if you can get yourself out there to podcasters, things like that. Um, there are whole databases of like people connecting podcasters to podcast guests. And, you know, there, so if you get creative, there are lots of ways to get your word out without having to invest a fortune in ads. That's fantastic. You know, it's, it's um, funny because I can talk to your dead grandmother or, you know, remove the spirit out of your, that you don't want anymore out of your space, but advertising keeps um, running away from me. So that collaboration is fantastic. So yeah. thank you for the information. Yeah, you're welcome. Great. Okay, uh, Sue, I don't know if you got your volume fixed. Uh, you're still there with your... I did, and I, I apologize. I meant to put that down because I know you've probably been on long enough and I've had a question. Um, can I make it really quick? Sure, go ahead. Um, in your experience, when, when someone has um, a large like vibration in a chakra, is that, can that be... a a guide trying to communicate? Is that typically maybe like a kundalini something or just the chakra opening? Mm. Have you? So are you feeling like you're feeling like a buzzing or a vibration in yes. a, a certain in chakra? My first Is chakra. It a, in what? My first chakra. In your root. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've actually had that. It's interesting about I don't know, maybe six or seven years ago, I had that experience. <laughs> I called my friend who's a sex therapist. I'm like, what's going on? Because I have I this vibration. <laughs> right? like, what is this? And she's like, yeah, I get that too. So um, what, what, at least what my experience was, and maybe this is why you're asking me, I don't know that this is something that just anybody would be able to answer, but it, it was a Kundalini activating, like that, that chakra was activating in a way. Um, I didn't have like a, a massive Kundalini awakening, but I did have a chakra opening that I experienced. And, and this doesn't only happen with the root chakra. This happens with other others as well, but um, where there's a buzzing, tingling, vibration, um, interesting, weird sensations sometimes. So a lot of times that's just an energetic expansion. If you think about like, if you go to the gym and work out a muscle, you're going to kind of feel it. It's going to feel uh, a little awkward and uncomfortable. You can think of it the same way with the chakras. You're opening a chakra. You're going to feel more energy, feel more vibration, sometimes feel different things that you're not used to feeling. So yeah, I don't think it's anything to worry about. <laughs> okay, good. All right, um, we're almost there. Next, we have Maria. Uh, hello, Sheila. Hi. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I have an unusual question because when I heard Trisha or Tricia, uh, I do the same. <laughs> I do the same. What she is doing that I that I send a lot around the world put the whole world in love and that everybody can take this what what he wants to take hmm. and um, maybe can you contact us together because i also have nobody i, I can talk to i did a lot of experience like uh, uh, soul travels when i when i got in in um <sighs> oh my gosh <laughs> As, um, what uh, things, what, uh, for example, El, uh, Alicia Herrera does, mm -hmm. Yeah, I do this by myself and I did, I learned a lot from myself, but I have nobody I can talk to, you know, also with, I have a lot of dreams and I have a, uh, like a, like a journal for three or four years now. I, I make a journal for my, from my um, dreams, what I do. Uh, but like I said, I have nobody I can talk to. It's interesting that you bring this up. So I have been getting the call for a while now <clears throat> to do a membership, like a, not a high-end membership, 
a, a, a monthly membership. I think you're, hold on, I'm gonna mute you, Maria. Yeah, that was right. Okay, uh, a membership where people can come in and really collaborate, you know, talk to each other, learn, grow, have events like this, but also have other people come in. Um, just if, if you guys would, whoever's still left, hanging in there, still got 72 on after almost two hours. I, I gotta go really soon too. I have a stop at, at four of my time, which is five minutes. But if you're interested in a membership, is that something that you would, would you would sign up for, that you'd be into? This would be where we would meet in events like this once a month, twice a month, something like that. I would have speakers come in. I would have a way that you could all interact and communicate together um, and, and maybe even put you in groups, you know, collaborative groups. We could do projects. We could work on, um, you know, meditations, do the master key, things like that, have a book club. I just think a membership would be a lot of fun and a way to kind of contain the energy where Facebook, you can't really contain the energy. You can get shut down for saying the wrong thing and, and stuff like that. So if that's something that, um, that you're open to, I'm surveying here. Let me know in the chat, just say yes. And uh, yeah, good, I'm seeing some yeses, awesome. So that's something that I'm planning to work on. And, and I, here's the thing, like I don't want anyone to ever feel like you're alone. Maria, I so get that. I was raised you know, in a family in rural Iowa. I know you probably all heard my story, but I did feel very alone in my experiences. I didn't have anyone to talk to. My family didn't get it. Um, yeah, Trisha, you spoke to the same thing. I know a lot of people probably can relate to that. Um, so as an adult, it's a really important part of my journey to, and thank you for all the yeses, good, because that was really what, I, what I'm feeling from spirit is that's my greatest next service where it's not something that's high end where people can afford it. And I'm really, I will be contributing a lot to it to make it like fun and act, you know, exciting, but where you don't have to feel alone, where you feel like you have a community, where you feel like you can talk to someone, you feel like, oh, hey, I just heard Trisha tell this story. I'm going to connect with her because I feel like that too, or, you know, whoever it is that you heard talk today. Um, so yeah, I want to create that for you guys. And I know I don't want anyone to feel alone and there's only one of me, but we're a huge, huge family of light. You know, there's so many of us, so we're not alone. Um, and I, I want, I want everyone to be able to connect with each other. It's important. It's important because we're ascending together. We're doing this work together and we're a family. Um, um, I would love to do su such a thing, but right now I have a big, big problem. I ha I'm unemployed and I have a real big problem with my teeth and I have a huge, um, what is this, bill that's almost killing me and uh, every uh, cent I spend otherwise, it's, it's moment momentarily, it's not, not, I cannot do it. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how much I would love to, but I, I'm not able to do it. I get it. Go to Facebook. Facebook is free. I don't have, I don't have, oh, you no have Facebook. Facebook. That's hard. Yeah. Well, there's got to be a way. Um, that's why, I, that's why I said, maybe you can just yeah. for now, can you conduct, connect me somehow? I see what you're saying. Trisha. Yeah. Trisha, if nice. you want to, if you want to connect with Maria, will you put your, um, will you, you can private message each other in the chat? And send each other your email address. I okay. have no idea how to do it private. I'm that too. Uh, Trisha, you can, you can just send it to me. Oh, you actually, yeah, she already put it there. I didn't know if oh, you wanted to send it to everyone, but that's awesome. Great. Okay, well, thank you guys. And you can connect. Um, oh, thank I, you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Good luck with everything. I'm sorry I can't take any more because I have a call in one minute and I don't want to leave that person waiting. But um, I just appreciate you all so much. I love you. This has been amazing. And I just really, oh, I'm so grateful that you all showed up for the Alchemy of Ascension. I hope you'll stay on my list and we'll do a whole lot more of these and, and get together and join a community and, you know, continue, continue this work, this powerful work. So blessings, everybody. I got to go. Namaste. <laughs> we love you back. Thank you. Thank you.